Welcome back to Money Talks. It's our version of ER for your finances. And this segment, we've got a brand new staff of doctors to consult with us. There's chartered financial consultant and insurance specialist Steven Steinbeck from Sagemark Consulting. There's debt specialist Tim McCallan, CEO of American Debt Management Services, and mortgage specialist David Shimano, Vice President of Mortgage Doctors. And welcome all of you. And this just shows the public how many kinds of professionals are <coughs> out there. Now, what I would like to do, I just want to start uh, and ask you, you are in an area, the credit repair area, that probably affects every single American today, even though we, we wish that weren't true. What training do you have? Well, to get we, into this. What, what our company basically does is uh, we work with consumers in putting together budgets and credit counseling. Uh, we do internal certification. There's actually no state tests that are given right now, although we are monitored by the New York State Banking Department. Yes. So we're, we're internally monitored and we have a stringent internal test within our company. And each company is set up on an individual basis. Now you may have heard in our first segment how new financial planning is maybe 20 years old. How new is your field? Our field has actually been around since the early 60s since the early 60s, and that sure. is credit repair, credit management, which of course brings me to the, uh, the mortgage doctors. Now, you of course are a ma mortgage banker, but mortgage doctors work with people that may have the kind of same kind of problems that go to see Tim. What's that all about? Well, um, what we do is we help people to tap the equity in their homes. Yes. So that um, people who can't qualify at an ordinary bank for reasons of income, for reasons of credit, uh, or even based on just the amount of equity they want to take out of their home, uh, we're able to help them to do that. So if people do have credit issues, credit problems, but they do own a home, you would be uh, assisting them in getting that loan and taking a look at, th at their finances. And we do have a call about Michael, Michael from Long Beach, are you with us? Yes, I am. Go right ahead with your question. Uh, I am, uh, my wife and I are trying to plan for uh, our future and our children's future. Yes. And in particular, we were planning on having a child next year and what would be the best way to plan for their education down the road? All right, now I'm going to say hello specific to... specific college education. I'm going to say hello to Steve on this one. Now, you can't deliver the baby, <laughs> but you can maybe deliver the college education. Uh, now, of course, insurance is one of the, your specialties, but you also have a generalist. You do estate planning, financial planning. What would you say to somebody who hasn't even had a child yet? How would you help them? I think the first thing that someone wants to do is sit down and create a plan or a road map. Uh, one of the biggest problems that we find is that people don't have any plans in place. Um, and that map should include um, what kind of college funding that you will want in the future. In other words, if the child is two years, are we talking about 16 years down the road? And some kind of guesstimates of what kind of college you may want to, your son or daughter to attend. So that's what you would actually do. If he sat down next to you, you would have, sort of give, get a wish list from him and work backwards with the amount of years he'd have to invest for the child, the amount of money he'd be able to put in, and do you think you would come up with mutual funds for him, annuities, what's the general type of investment that you work with? I think you'd probably want to have a balanced portfolio. In other words, you'd want to have some things that will take advantage of the growth potential. Uh, and you also want to have some security as well. In other words, you want to put all your eggs in one basket, but basically this would be a growth-oriented portfolio. I want to ask you one other question because it, it's very related and it came in the email. What are some good rules of thumb for levels of life insurance, uh, Ted asked us, for family members? How do you determine if whole life policies or term policies are what you want? And I think that this gentleman, this father-to-be, is also probably worried about insurance. Well, I think that um, any of the rules of thumb that you may have heard out there are probably not the best way to go. Really a thorough analysis of your situation is what you want to do because every family is very different individual and what may work for one family may be a disaster for another. Uh, in terms of the question of permanent versus term insurance, the overriding factor must be to make sure the family is protected so okay, if something should happen. So that's what you could afford. Right, exactly. Yeah, so don't underinsure. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and the, the key important point is, is that you want to make sure you have the most amount of face value of insurance coverage that you need. And, and then you can worry about whether or not it has cash value. Absolutely. We're getting so many calls. We have to rush over and say hello to Steve from Massapequa. Steve, are you with us? Uh, yes. Yes, go right ahead, Steve. Okay, I have about $24,000 in debt. And I was thinking about taking out a home equity loan on my home. Uh, recently, they've been letting a lot of people off at the place where I'm working, so I'm in fear of losing my job. And I'm wondering right, if I should right. take out this home equity loan 
or should I continue paying the minimum monthly payments like I've been doing? Interesting, because I'm going to ask you both that question and see if I get the same answer. You mm -hmm. heard the question. What do you say to <clears throat> Steve? Well, it's um, difficult to compare credit card interest with mortgage interest. Obviously, mortgage interest uh, amortizes itself over time, and it's certainly better than just paying a minimum payment and letting credit and cards sort of deductible. float around. That's correct. However, um, if you fear for the security, there's always the angle where you want to ask a financial advisor if mm. it's wise to secure debt that is unsecured mm. and put that against your house. Can we um, take out a home equity line of credit and just leave it unused so that he has it just in case he gets excessed and then you won't give him the loan? Yes, absolutely. So he could do that. Now, what do you say as the somebody who's seen people get into home equity or credit <coughs> issues, how would you counsel him? Well, we always recommend that you don't take secured debt and turn it into, or take unsecured debt and turn it into secured debt, like you had said. Um, what I'd recommend, since his future is uh, unstable and he's not sure exactly what is going to happen, I'd recommend that he puts himself into a budget, tries to cut back on some of his spending, and create a savings plan for himself. Mm -hmm. And then in the future, if he does need to exercise that home equity line, uh, it would be a possibility, but again, it's on an individual basis because you're securing your debt mm. uh, at that time, and if you can't make your payments on your home at that time, what will then happen is your house will be foreclosed on. Well, so right now what you have is somebody who has to sit back and think what his real uh, risk tolerance is, and that's really what yeah. our answer to you is, Steve. Uh, it's there for you. You can have it unfunded if you would like, if you're concerned about it and have it handy. But you certainly do not want to overextend yourself because it's a place to get into some real trouble. Uh, we have another question here uh, from Andy. Is there a rule of thumb for buying a house that has rental apartment included? He's going to live in the house, but he's getting $600 a month also. Now, how much more of a mortgage could you give him or how much more of a mortgage do you think he'd be able to afford because he's getting this extra $600 every month? Well, the only rule of thumb here is that the income will count and will allow you to buy a larger house. However, every borrower is different, and the only way to get a real analysis of how much more house you can buy is uh, by getting a personalized, uh, talking to a mortgage counselor and getting, you know, the correct view. Now, this is very interesting. There was a time you went to, got, you got a mortgage, and maybe they gave you some dishes. Now, you go to a mortgage counselor, a debt counselor your insurance advisor, no, an estate planner now. So people have to understand that there truly are a lot of new services out there. There are a lot of kinds of money doctors. And you work with uh, people over the net, websites, talk to you personally. That's the way it's done these days, am I right? Yes, it is. Yeah. How long does it take on average to get a mortgage? That um, really depends on the difficulty of, you know, of obtaining the specific mortgage loan, but it can be anything from Two or three days. To Two or three. It used to be. It used to be weeks. And I, I must go, but I have to ask you: If somebody comes in for credit repair, what's the average amount of time that it might take them? Depends upon the mark on the credit report itself, but um, most consumers can take care of it within 30 to 60 days. How many hours do you put into doing a estate plan on average? It'll vary dramatically based on the assets, the type of assets. Um, probably you're spending 20, 30 hours. 20 to on 30 average. hours of plan. I want to thank all of my wonderful money doctors for joining me. There's Steven Steinbeck, Tim McCallan, David Shimano. And don't forget, right after the show, I'll be online to answer your financial questions. So join us for our post-show chat. Uh, just go to the website, www.msgmetro.com. Click on Metro Chat. I hope to see you there. But when we come back, I'll be answering all your money calls, your emails, your phone calls. So call us with those money questions. It's toll-free. 1-877-674-METRO.